Welcome back. I'm Shad, and uh, we're digging into the 2024 Kitchen Trends uh, by the NKBA. And so the next segment we're talking about here, uh, actually it's the continuation of the previous segment, is about um, the goals that people are trying to achieve in their kitchens. So what I found interesting about this segment, there's actually um, two pages of content here just related to the goals that people are looking to achieve when it relates to islands, cabinets, lighting, uh, countertops, cooking appliances, faucets, flooring, sinks, and refrigeration. What I found fascinating on this, let's talk about islands for just a moment, okay? So they mentioned here that 78% of users are trying to achieve their goals with islands um, to improve usability. Now I could talk about all kinds of things that that might mean. Um, when you're talking about island usability, it could be um, <clears throat> clearance and walkway space around it, it could be seating, it could be preparation um, use, uh, perhaps even the uh, appliances you put in the island. Focal point is one of the interesting elements that it talks about here is uh, creating focal point and islands and lighting were the highest for creating a focal point and I will endorse the lighting side. You may have heard me said before in other videos that lighting is one of the least expensive ways to make the biggest impact on a space and so a really good way to focus some of your attention if you're trying to save a dollar or two. Next thing to create contrast to other parts of the kitchen. Now, this comes back to the conversation about two or more colors in a kitchen. So if you're going to find a focal point, an island's an easy place to do that because the island stands alone, right? It's really easy to delineate um, a, a difference in color because the island itself um, is independent from the rest of the cabinetry. Um, the other part is uh, flexibility for living and aging in place. I can't think of why what goal somebody's trying to achieve for the aging in place portion for an island per se. There's all kinds of things you can do throughout the kitchen in general for aging in place, but we'll do another segment on that one later because that's one of my favorite topics to address, especially in an aging population like we have now. So stay tuned for that one. The last three things that they have on here, which are, are not as strong on the island side, but they're stronger in some of these other um, categories. Um, number one is to minimize upkeep and cleaning. So the highest focal points on that would be they put down was uh, countertops and flooring. The interesting thing to me is um, most time flooring, the only time that you have much resistance on cleaning is when you have textured flooring. Obviously carpet you're gonna vacuum, but for hard surface flooring, if you have a heavy textured wood or maybe vinyl with a lot of detail to it or relief value to the, to the design, that's gonna add to the, the limitations on the cleaning. The countertops, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure I understand that one because most countertops are pretty smooth and people want cleanability, but perhaps that was just the knee-jerk reaction that people picked on what they wanted to achieve on keeping countertops um, you know, easy to upkeep and clean. The last two, to blend seamlessly and visibly with overall kitchen design. And the other one is maximize energy or water efficiency, um, or in other words, to source uh, environmentally friendly materials. So on the first one, the blend seamlessly and visibly with the overall kitchen, the two highest rated ones there, flooring and refrigeration. Refrigeration makes sense to me because um, we're used to, it is in one of our previous videos we've done, where refrigerators stick out, you know, sometimes too far. They become a, a hindrance to the walkway space and they're an eyesore. The thing about ref refrigerators, not only that, but a lot of people like to put panels on them and integrate them into the cabinets to make them look seamless in that way. And that's very popular in your, your luxury spaces and, and, and a lot of your um, high-end projects where people are trying to put a large fridge but don't want it to take, uh, get a lot of visibility. The last one about the, the maximizing energy, water efficiency, um, environmentally friendly materials, the highest categories that they were concerned about achieving that goal with would, was refrigeration and cooking appliances. So naturally with appliances, you have electricity use that they're trying to reduce. Some manufacturers are trying to find ways to um, make environmentally friendly their insulation products that they use for the refrigerators. And then, in my personal opinion, one of the most important elements of environmentally friendly products is to make something last a long time, right? Go for a high quality product that you won't have to replace in 10 years or five years down the road. Make something last another five or 10 years longer that keeps it out of the landfill and, um, and makes it that much more uh, environmentally friendly, in my opinion. All right, so kitchen style and vision. This is where it gets um, kind of fun. We have a, quite a list of variables or factors. This study was done by over 600 respondents in the industry. Um, I responded to this, over 600 others as well, giving their feedback on what's the trends for 2024 and beyond, by the way. 
So this segment here mentions the next three years. So it's not just 2024, it's kind of looking forward a little bit further. So the biggest changes are expected to happen. Let's just hit the highlights. Color number one, which will be interesting. Two is styles. Three, controls and settings. Four, space functionality and planning. Five, storage and the six appliances. Sorry, one more, eco-friendly sustainable materials. But we'll talk a little bit about this one by one. So color. What the industry thinks is gonna happen with color in the next one to three years is we're gonna see more colors and colorful. Now I'm just gonna tell you, um, uh, one of my theories about color when it comes to this, I don't remember which segments, but I'll, I'll probably mention this many times because it's something I truly believe in. You want to design a space for you in most cases if you're going to plan to live there for you know five to seven years or longer um, because it's going to make it so that it's more attractive to people like you and they'll pay top dollar for a space that looks um, like what they want versus going very neutral and everything. We're already seeing blues. Um, uh, yellows, um, green, even forest green is making a comeback from um, the mid 90s, uh, early to mid 90s. Almost the same forest green, by the way, just as a little side note. The next thing that they say in the color field is warm colors and tones. I'm okay with that. I, I will tell you though, um, we had the Tuscan era, right, of about um, 20 years ago for about five to seven years, that trend, where you had a lot of your creams and taupes and browns and you weren't in the gray family at all. It was very much in the, the cream and brown tones, right? I'm not so sure I think that that's gonna be dominant, but of course, there's a big jump from where it says more colors down to, to warm colors. They're saying the number one style growth, the biggest change is gonna be in modern. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. We're seeing so much more of a movement into the, to the sleek, minimalistic, um, very few details and, um, and uh, you know, pattern maybe in material, but not in, in depth of material. Next thing is controls and settings. It talks about connectivity and integration with smart home systems. Um, though I don't know, I necessarily feel like it makes sense to have everything smart home because it doesn't, I don't, I have all kinds of things that I've connected to apps on my phone that I just don't use. However, that's just the way things are going. It's gonna happen whether we like it or not, I think. Next one, space functionality planning. It mentions functional design, form after function or function before form. In other words, always make sure the space works properly first and then make it look pretty. Storage, the very first thing under storage it addresses here for the biggest changes again, hidden storage, hidden and smart storage. You're seeing a lot of things where it's a touch to open feature. Um, you want to have your hidden pantries, maybe your toe kick storage, which we addressed in a previous video. Last section is the on the appliances, the biggest changes is induction cooktops. If you don't know much about induction cooktops, um, the basic concept is it uses magnets. It's a more expensive, it's a newer technology. Um, you know, it's really become more to the forefront over the last five to 10 years, um, but it's getting more and more affordable to uh, use in your, in your kitchens. Um, the next one here is a kitchen environment. So popular environments. What is the kitchen used for besides cooking, you know, eating and cleaning? I'm just gonna address the top four um, that the industry professionals said. Number one, sociable and welcoming. Two is to place for healthy, living and wellness. Minimalistic, simple, clean, we've addressed that. Um, it's taking a big wave um, in the US, very much started in Europe and it's and it's going throughout the rest of, the, uh, of our nation as well. And then connection with that, with nature and outdoors. So you're seeing a lot of integration of space, a lot of um, uh, movable walls that are glass walls that you can integrate, um, bringing nature in, a lot of plants, um, a lot of uh, backdrops, definitely um, that's picking up. You see a lot of people lo loving the look of being out in the middle of nowhere and having this be beautiful modern home that's just a lot of open space, right? And even open living or outdoor living is, is, is really strong. Last in this segment has to do with popular styles and visions. The top four here that are, that are expected next year. So number one is transitional and timeless. Now, timeless, in my opinion, is a little bit of an interesting one because I think you can take something from a, a mid-century or a turn of the century or a New England look and design a space so well that even in 100 years from now, you'll still appreciate that for what its theme or, or time period was. However, if you're not really good at making a themed space work exactly the way that it, everything matches with that theme, then um, going for something that's more transitional, where you have a mix or a blend between, say, contemporary, traditional and contemporary, right? Contemporary meaning um, current modern day styles with some traditional elements. Um, that is by far the, the highest out of all of them. 
Contemporary modern was next. Again, that, that movement, I think that will overtake transitional within the next few years, and by far, by the next time they do this next report, I think that that will be the number one. Organic and natural, um, I think that that's just always had a, a place in society. Organic and natural products, you have a lot of limitations on. Not a lot of products are per se organic and natural, depending on how you look at that. But there are uh, some really neat products out there that can work really well for you. Um, and then the last of the top four is mid-century and Scandinavian. I just think that all that is, is that's just um, another cycle of, of trends and styles coming back from when we were looking at things like the, uh, the Tuscan um, look and so forth. So I hope you like what you're seeing. If you have feedback, if you have opposing opinions or you have uh, congruent opinions, please um, leave them below and, and of course like and subscribe uh, to see more. All right, thanks for coming.